Hi folks, this is Jason and I uh, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. And we're looking at the love of God. So let's come before the Lord and ask his blessings. Father, we thank you uh, for your grace and your love and your blessings. And we give you the praise and we give you the glory and we acknowledge that you're our God today. We pray as we look at your word that you bless us and encourage us today in Jesus' name. May we know your love today in Jesus. Amen. Okay, we're going to look at uh, John 15. and um, So let's uh, turn to John 15. And um, words, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Men and every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it may bring more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in, in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and he withereth, and the men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glory, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you continue in my love if you keep my commandments you shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abided in his love these things have I spoken unto you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you greater love have no man than this that he lay down his life for his friends you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, but for the servant knoweth not what the, his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatever you shall ask of the Father in my and to you. These things I command you, that you love one another. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will be kicked keep yours also. But all these things they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. I have not come and spoken unto them, they had not a sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hated me hated my father also. If I have not done among them the works which no other man did, they had not had sin, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in the law, they hated me without a cause. When the Comforter is come, whom I shall send unto the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he will testify of me, and you also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. So first of all, we have the passage there from verse 1 to 3 the analogy of Jesus is the vine I am the true vine verse 1 and my father is the husbandman every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he beareth it and that it may bring forth more fruit now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you so notice that to know the love of God is to be in Christ just as a vine a branch is in a vine taking the life. I see a branches in the vine of Christ and as we trust in him he gives us our spiritual life he gives us our nourishment but this love of God 
is not only life-giving, it is a searching love. If you turn to verse 4 of chapter 15 of John, he said, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, nor more can you except you abide in me. If you're going to bear fruit, you've got to be in Christ. It says, verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Verse 6, if a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Verse 7, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So if you don't abide in Christ, so it's a searching love. He wants you to grow in him, be blessed in him, bear fruit in him. But if you don't bear fruit, he will cast you aside. Secondly, it's a tender love. If you turn to verse 8 and 10 of John 15. Herein in my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so you shall be my disciples. As the Father have loved me, so I have loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. God wants you to abide in his love. He wants you to rest in his love today. He wants you to know that he's with you today, that he cares for you today, that he wants to be with you, bless you and encourage you today. You are not on your own. It says in Romans 8, let's turn to Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God will be with you. He will not leave you in your situation. This love of God is not only searching, not only tender, but it's overflowing. If we turn to John 15 and verse 11. These things I have spoken to you that you might, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. Christ laid down his life for you. He gave all that he could for you and so he wants you to realize this that he gave himself for you today and so in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9 they it talks about they turned from the idols to the living God and God wants you to turn away from your idols to him and know his amazing love that he gave you at the cross where Christ was punished for you died for you you turn to Acts chapter 22, 16. Acts 22, verse 16. And now, why tarry thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sin, calling on the name of the Lord. We can be washed and cleansed today. For all the sins that we committed if we turn to Christ. 2 Corinthians 6. Two Corinthians 6. 8 and 11. By honour and dishonour, by evil report and good report, as deceived and yet true, unknown and yet well known. As dying, and behold, we live as chastised and are not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessions all things. Paul is described, and yet in his persecution, God was with him. So not only are we forgiven, we do go through difficult times, but 
God overflows in his love even in our tribulation and difficulties. And God's love is gentle. We turn to, to John 15, 25. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in the law. They hated me without a cause. But when the comforter is come, when I will send you from the far, send him from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. The comforter, the Holy Spirit, will be there with you, will give you peace and joy and comfort. God wants you now to know that his love is with you. It's a searching love. He's going to purge you. He's going to show you your faults. It's a tender love. A love where he wants you to grow and wants you to be blessed. It's an overflowing love where he laid down his life for you and wants you to come into new life with him. And it's a gentle love where he gives you the Holy Spirit. My friend, what is your response to all this? Let us turn to Matthew 9.13. Matthew 9 13 but go ye and learn what I that and not sacrifice for I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance what does this all mean what it means is we need to repent and turn to Christ and trust in him that's what it means today come to your Lord and say Lord I'm sorry that I've drifted away from you Lord forgive me show me and help me to follow you today I want to know your love. I want to know your grace. I want to know your blessings. Let's come before the Lord. Father God, we come before you today and we give you the praise and we give you the glory today. We acknowledge that you are our God, that you are our Savior, you are our Lord, and we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. That there is no God like you. And so, God, we praise you and glorify you today. And we pray, Lord, may we know your love, may we know your grace. We ask this, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. I hope this was a blessing to you, and may God bless you. And uh, may you know his love today. God bless.